Good morning, friends. Today I'm playing with roses. I get asked about these all the time. I think these and peonies are the most popular flowers I get asked to paint a lot. What I wanted to do today is I'm just playing with a couple different ways to paint these. And I just wanted to share them with you. And then I'm also gonna share the exact brush stroke because I feel like a lot of you, the, the things I'm hearing is um, I can't leave white space or it's all the same color. I can't get the washy edge. So I hope what I'm gonna show you is gonna help you out. Uh, first, I'll just show you a couple of the brush strokes that I use and how I kind of apply them, maybe the pattern, and then we'll go ahead and do the three uh, techniques that I use. So the first one is wet on dry, which is this. The second one is uh, wet, I guess wet on wet. So I'm painting the rose and then going around the edges with just some clear water. And then the last one will be um, a wet on wet as well, or kind of actually erase that, not wet on wet, glazes. So I'm painting a rose and then I'm going in with a glaze of a different color. All right, so we've got wet on dry, wet on wet, and actually in this one, I might even add some color, wet color into wet color. And then this one will be more of a glazing, which I love because it has so much depth in it. Cause you can see the orange or the yellow, but you see the pink in the background kind of shining through. So let's get started. What I wanna do first is I'm just going to, and by the way, this is my Artisto pad. You know, I love these and this is the perfect um, exercise to keep in these books. You could even name a whole book, Roses. Love them. They're not 100% cotton, but they're fantastic. They could have a lot of texture. If you don't need to hear about supplies, just fast forward or mute me out. But uh, this is such a great little book. Again, you could do a whole book just on roses and brush strokes and then just label that. I think these are fantastic for beginners. I still use them. Um, as you see, I have tons and tons and tons of them filled with all kinds of fun stuff. So let's get started. Today I'm using my Mylane paints. As you know, I love them. This is the bigger set. You don't have to have this set. Um, this is the Metallics. Love my Windsor Newton palette, but can't afford to paint with that every day, the volume I'm painting. So I just use these. And honestly, you guys, I'm a lazy painter. I admit it. I like my colors mixed for me because I'm playing a lot of times. So this is a great palette. They're creamy, they're transparent, um, and lots of colors. So for the beginner, you don't have to stress out about trying to mix a light orange or a light blue or different pinks. It gives you tons of different um, colors to work with. And they have a smaller set, 36, That did, if you don't want these metallics. I like the metallics, as you know. And let's see, today, I'm, I'm gonna tell you guys, I'm noticing I've been using the eight Velvet Touch uh, brush for, I'm not kidding you guys, since college, which is decades ago. And just lately, I found this Neptune brush round Princeton uh, in my arsenal of art supplies, and I've been challenging myself to use it. It's a lot softer, so it holds a lot more water. Um, so that's a little bit harder to control, but I've really been enjoying it. But use whatever round brush you have. Uh, the eight round is great. The Dugatos I always share with you guys, fantastic. You get a whole set for like $12. Uh, if you don't wanna invest in the Princetons. Uh, but today I'm gonna be using this Neptune. And then of course, make sure you have your clean and your, your wash and your rinse water and a napkin. All right. Let me go through first. Let's just start um, with some brush strokes because I think that's really important. So the brush strokes I'm using in the middle of my flower, and what I do, you guys, I get asked about this all the time too, is, so I put paint in my palette like so. I make sure it's very movable. This is maybe a 50-50. That's just kind of the mid-range mix I will use. 50% water, 50 pigment. 
And then I always make sure I tap it off on the side. So any extra water in the belly of my brush, which is the middle of my brush, gets tapped out. And I'm not going into my painting with a big, huge amount of water. You can also do something like that and just get rid of a little excess water. So the brush strokes I use for my roses is I start in the middle with some very, just the tip of the brush, holding your brush upright and just tiny little C strokes, very light pressure with your brush. Brush is upright. And I'm always resting the side of my, uh, palm of my hand on my paper because I see people hover and paint. I can't do it, you guys. I don't know if I drink too much coffee, but that doesn't work for me. So here we are, little tiny brush strokes, very tight, very small, little C strokes. So maybe practice some of those C strokes, these little tiny ones, just like that, little tiny ones. And then as I spread out, I'm going to start making them just a tiny bit bigger. And you wanna stagger them. You don't want every C stroke behind each other. You want them to be staggered, kind of like bricks on a brick walkway. So I'm going out, I'm staggering them, I'm making them a little bit bigger. Now I start making them a little fatter, longer. Okay, so see they're gradually getting bigger, bigger, I'm pushing into my brush more, staggering my brush strokes, getting even bigger. And you can do that type of, um, I use the compound stroke, which is uh, point, press, lift up and point, but you can also do like a comma, like that. So point, press, bring around, point point press and I'm getting bigger and bigger as I expand out because of course the rose petals are getting larger, right? And then at the end you can even do point press. I mean, you can really go big and start making them point press point press almost like a V. So something like point, press, and back in. Okay, I'm just showing you the brush strokes here. Point, press, as we get bigger and bigger and bigger, all right? Point, press. Now that's just the brush strokes. Obviously our rows, we aren't going to have all this white space and that's where I'll get into more of the technique. But I wanted to show you the brush strokes so that you kind of can see that and hopefully that will help you. Now with the leaves, because we'll put a few leaves in here, we get some pink in my palette here, 50-50 mix, tap off my brush or dab on your paper towel, and it's point side of my brush, like that, point side of my brush. Rose petals are kind of round, so make them a little bit round, vary the size of your petal, your uh, leaves. Point, press, there we go. And I like to kind of have a few that are tucked in, a few that are, you see the whole leaf. So those are our basic brush strokes. You might wanna just practice those for a bit. Those C strokes, point, press, point, press, do it from the other side, point, press. And in the beginning, you're just starting very tight, little tiny C's, staggering them. You don't wanna stack those C's all behind each other, okay? Getting bigger and bigger as you expand out. And there you go. The other thing I notice is when you're doing your rose strokes, you know, try to, don't just make them one exact size. 
you want to have a little bit of lift on the end so it's thinner and then the middle of the petals kind of wide like that all right so just practice some of those and let's uh i'm gonna go ahead and get started sharing my three techniques for painting roses this is also the artisto paper but it's a little larger it's the 9 by 12 a great paper too um, like I said, I just can't recommend this enough for beginners. I think the paper is so great. And I've charged, tried so many. Canson, uh, which is decent, I used for years in my workshops. Um, but I found this and I thought it was so much better. All right. <clears throat> so the first rows I'm going to do is just going to be wet on dry. All right. So we're going to, what we're going to, going to be doing is starting out with, um, a little darker color, darker value, so maybe 80-20 for the inside of the rose, because of course the inside of the rose is tighter, smaller, it's gonna be darker. So let's just do our C strokes. Our little C strokes expanding out. There we go. Okay. Now I'm going to rinse a little bit of that pigment off my brush and I'm just going to keep going and getting bigger, larger, wet on dry, staggering my brush strokes, my C's, little bit more water, tap off my brush. So I'm getting lighter and lighter as I move outwards a little bit more paint lighter and lighter and lighter like this all right so this is a decent rose it's got a lot of white space but i think this is the easiest rose to do and all I did was I went in, I started dark, and I got lighter, adding more water as I went out. It's a decent rose. It's good, like I said, for a beginner. Do a leaf here. Leafs always add a little something, right? There we go. Okay, so that's a decent rose. You could do a whole thing of those and you'd be fine. The second rose I wanna show you is more of a wet and wet. So we're going to start with, again, a dark value in the middle. Let's do our center, our little C strokes, like so. Now, as I start going out, rinse my brush a little bit and I'm going to touch in and start making these larger, longer, bigger. Rinse my brush again, point press, point press, staggering those brush strokes, okay? And now I'm going very wet in wet. Look at how much lighter that's going. I'm going to tap into the center, get rid of just a few of those brush strokes. You can make these very light. So I'm going in now with almost all water. And while it's wet, what I'm going to do is go in, maybe just add in and let it spread a little bit more, touch in with a little bit more of that pink. This is where be very aware of how much water you've got on your brush, guys, because if you have too much, it's gonna turn into a big blob. So tapping off your brush. Now I'm gonna go in with some cad yellow. Let me find somewhere to put some cad yellow. That's gonna actually be a little cad yellow and orange. And again, not too much water. If you have too much, you're gonna end up with a big old mess. Just damp. And I'm just touching in. There we go. Look how pretty that is. The colors are mixing, they're blending. Wet and wet, guy, damp. Let's put in your mind, this is damp. Damp in damp. 
And look at these beautiful colors. I also am keeping that white space but I'm letting these colors mix and merge. Look how beautiful. Now, while that's wet, we wanna go in and get our leaf in there. Not too much water, tap off. And we're going to let that blend with our rose. Just kind of get in there. There we go. So look how pretty that is. So that's a next level up. This is a beginner rose. Good, nice. This is a little bit more advanced. I could even go into the middle with just a little bit more of that dark paint and tap in just to darken that center. So I'm gonna leave that just how it is. Now our last rose is going to be more of a glazing. So I'm gonna go in and let's create another rose, our little C's here. Get some more paint on my brush. There we go. Okay. Getting bigger and bigger little bit more water on my brush. Little bit more water, bigger, broader strokes. Now this rose, I actually, because I added most of the strokes on this side, it kind of looks like it's facing upward, doesn't it? There we go. Now I might go in with just a little bit of that wet and wet. This is the most advanced. I mean, there's, there's other ways too that are advanced, but I'm using all my pink color, okay? Go in and maybe just close up a few of these white spots. Tapping in with a little bit darker of the pink. We're staying with the pink because we're gonna glaze some of the yellows in there. Now again, make sure you're damp. You're not going in with a fully loaded wet brush because that's when you get the blobs and the big uh, messes, all right? So what I'm gonna do right now, actually gonna fix that edge a little bit, there we go, is I'm gonna use my little heat gun and I'm gonna dry this a bit because we're gonna go for the glazing wet and dry. I actually think this is the hardest. I should have done this one second. So let's just dry this a bit and then we'll go in with a glaze, which again, I love the glazes, you guys, because it shows so much depth. You can glaze over the pink with uh, some of this cad yellow and orange Yet, you, because of the luminosity of watercolors, that's the magic in watercolors, it sh the pink shows through, and it's so beautiful. So this is drying pretty quickly. I think that's good enough. All right, so wet and dry. Yeah, I think actually this would be, well, I'll, I'll label that in a minute. So now I'm going in with a clean brush. I'm going to pick up some of that cad yellow, not too dark, so probably 80, 20, 80 pigment, 20 water. I'm sorry, 80 water, 20 pigment. Tap off. You don't wanna go in with a big old fat full belly. And then I'm just gonna glaze over this. with this very transparent, beautiful yellow orange. And there you go. So it's a little bit different, but it's just as beautiful. Now let's go in with our green, point press, get those beautiful leaves in there.
Now we're not gonna get all that spread because it's not wet, which is fine. I also a lot of times just like to add in a little bit of the color of our rose into my, cause I see a lot of red in my leaves of my roses outside. So I like to add a little bit of that in. So look at the differences here. Very much beginner, which is perfectly fine, but you've got a lot of white space. It's all a little bit flatter, but it's a perfectly good rose. The second one, I think, is as far as technique and how difficult, wet and wet is always going to be the most difficult because the more water in your pigment and your brush, the harder to control, right? It's harder to control a puddle versus um, damp. So the second one is glazing. You go in with your first layers, getting lighter and lighter as you go out, let it dry, then go over with a light wash of your next color, which in this case, I used a mixture of cat orange and cat yellow. And look at how beautiful, it just has this interest. Your eye sees this beautiful gold color, but the pink, shows through that luminosity, that translucency. So interesting, I love it. And then the third flower, which I think is the most difficult because there's the most water involved, is wet and wet. And that's where we're going in while the flower is wet or damp. I should use the word damp. We're going in and touching in. So this has, well, this, let me write it down, is, hopefully you can see my pencil here. So this is a student. Start here. This is our simplest technique. And this is wet on dry. And we have more pigment. And as we go out, we're rinsing our brush a bit, making it lighter and lighter and lighter, okay? And then the second, let's do this one as the second one, because I think wet and wet, like I said, is the hardest technique. This is wet on dry, and then glazing or layers, which is so beautiful. That's where the magic is, you guys, truly. So that is number two, I would say, this number one. Then number three is wet and wet. Wet and wet is always going to be the most difficult for the beginner. The least amount of control. The most control about middle, because this is also a form of wet on dry. So this has still some control. And then wet on wet, it's a free for all, you guys. I'm just kidding, but it is definitely gonna move a lot more. You're gonna get a much softer, washier look. And maybe, you know, in your painting, use all three. Or if you're a beginner, get used to this. And practice these brush strokes. Now this is a, to me, I don't care for this rose. I made, got way too much white space. But what I was showing you here is this brush stroke. As you're going out, you're getting fatter and fatter, more pressure on your brush. The inside is just starting with little dots maybe in the very center and then tiny C strokes. Tip number two, make sure you stagger your rose petals. You don't want them to look like this, right? That would be silly, okay? That's just not as interesting. It's very symmetrical. Nature is not symmetrical. So stagger in between your rose petals. Practice this brush stroke. When you get out to the outer edges, they can even go something like that, like that type of shape. Okay. I hope this helped. I hope it gives you a few ideas in painting roses. Remember, Tip, tip, tip. 
Wet and wet is always gonna be harder because you have more water, the more water, the less control. I say damp on damp, especially for the beginner. Wet on dry, the easiest to control. The water is only gonna go right where your brush puts it. It's not gonna spread. On this wet and dry, I did add more water to my brush, tried to lighten the color as I spread out. Number two, glazes and layers, which really is, I think, almost my favorite. It's just got such a beautiful look, okay? And I think that's it. I hope this helps you. Thanks so much for being here. I love our little community. You guys are the best, and um, I hope this definitely helped come back to maybe this video and share your uh, paintings on our Facebook um, private page. I try to pop in there as much as possible. Everybody in there is so fantastic. I also have a website with lots of free drawings. Um, it really helps me if you subscribe or um, like or comment. It just gives me feedback on if you're enjoying this stuff or not and what you like best. I love it, I love your stories. So I think that's it, everybody. Thanks so much again for being here with me and helping me create this wonderful little community. And please give these a try and see which one is easiest for you. All right, I will talk to all of you soon.